Is it not slightly inflammatory to say, to use the term sort of gas chambers to describe how these pigs are being killed? I'll be going down into the gas. Is that Joey? Yeah, Joey speaking. Hi, Joey. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Um, yeah, thanks for taking the time to speak. In terms of what's happening there at the scene, I mean, I mean, how many of you are there? Uh, we began our protest yesterday. We had 50 uh, protesters with there for four hours, and then uh, we received a response from the RSPCA. The reason we're there is because they are uh, assuring pigs that are killed in these gas chambers. But not only that, they make a, a percentage. It's called a levy. Uh, on, right. on all the products sold. So they're actually yeah. funding their entire RSPCA assured sector of their organization through making markups on pigs killed in uh, CO2 gas chambers, which, which they know is scientifically horrific because they signed for an underhanded ban for CO2, but at the same time, they're endorsing it with their trusted logo. We ask them to remove their logo from the, from the pork products, minimum, because it misleads the public into thinking something happy happened to these animals, and they know it's, it's egregiously cruel, these chambers, which is against their values. They shouldn't be using the RSPCA label on uh, animal products altogether. So, so just to make sure I, I understand this, so the, the RSPCA, they have this RSPCA assured logo which they put on certain products saying that where the animal was killed was up to the proper standards and many of these pork products which has this label have come from pigs which were killed using um, CO2 gas. Yeah, so essentially like the RSPCA have certain standards that farming should meet. Yeah. So they will say, they will have an RSPCA assured vet go out to certain farms and assure the farm. They come out once a year. Now they can be, then the farmer has to pay a membership fee to the RSPCA to use their logo on the product. And then the slaughter is actually part of that assurance as well. So there's only yeah. certain kinds of slaughter that the RSPCA will assure. CO2 is one of them and CO2 is and scientifically known by every every scientific study done on this for decades now to be completely abhorrent, barbaric and cruel. Yes, the RSPCA might be doing certain things on the ground that minimise certain welfare issues, but there's this big, big one called CO2 that 90% of all pigs in the UK are slaughtered with, which I exposed the first gas chamber in UK history actually, and it's in my documentary Pignorant. What they're doing by putting their trusted logo on there when people say oh, RSPCA rescue dogs and cats, if you ask anyone, <laughs> they would say, well, something happy happened to this animal when that can't, couldn't be further from the truth. Well, for decades, they say they're looking for alternatives. It's not going to happen because it's not financially, none of the alternatives are financially viable for the industry. The RSPCA is supposed to support in the use of what you describe as sort of gas chambers to sort of kill these pigs via RSPCA short logo. Yeah, exactly. They're endorsing yeah. it to people who have no idea who just associate RSPCA with animal welfare, which is inc incredibly misleading. It's, it's, it's false advertising. I think there should be some type of advertising standards about this because it, it's ubiquitously agreed upon, even in welfare circles, like not just animal rights circles, that CO2 is a aversive gas. I've got so much research on this, it's, it's all out there. Uh, the Farm Animal Welfare Council back 20 years ago called for it to be banned. And they're part of DEFRA, the government. But beca because there's no alternative, the pork industry just won't change. If there, if there is no alternative, yeah. people are still going to eat pork and then the RSPCA still have to make efforts to try and make sure that these you know, pigs are sort of killed in a responsible, humane way, but there's no alternative. What can they do? Well, what they can do is they can become independent of the meat industry. And, and, and instead of being paid directly by the meat industry, which is an incredible conflict of interest, they can be honest with the public. People are still going to eat meat, but many people won't eat pork, actually, if, they were tr if there was transparency. So as an animal welfare charity, they should be saying to the public, look, there's no alternative to CO2. We outright condemn it. We cannot put our logo on this product um, because it goes against our values. So we're telling you right now, not, just don't buy it. Just don't buy pork for in this country. They actually already do this with non-stun halal meat. They won't, they won't assure it because the animals suffer when they get their throat slashed and they haven't been rendered insensible to pain. Now, CO2 is arguably worse because these animals are suffering horribly in agony. And before they're insensible to, to pain, their CO2 makes them experience extreme terror and they defecate all over themselves and they're trying to escape the gas chamber. I, I recommend you actually just check out the footage on my YouTube channel, it's called UK Pig Gas Chamber. You'll see it there come up. It's horrifying, it's something out of a nightmare. So RSPCA already 
remove their logos from certain kinds of products. Uh, so why wouldn't they do it with uh, CO2? It's, uh, I feel like it's because they're making a lot of money from the pork sector to keep their, their charity going. So it would be like a huge hit on that assurance scheme. But I don't think they should even be inside of the meat industry. So they should police it independently so they can't have any conflicts of interest. That would be like the police officers being funded by drug dealers or something. There could never be any any true, no. true accountability. No, I, I mean, I just have to make this point. Just, I'm sure you can appreciate it. Is there not a little bit of an, of an irony in sort of animal rights activists sort of protesting the organisation who's sort of responsible for the most private prosecutions for animal cruelty in the UK. Yeah, but they won't take um they won't take prosecutions for farmed animals anymore. They they pass it on to trading standards. This is known fact. They're not independent of the meat industry, right? Now we we investigated a free range uh, farm that was assured by the RSPCA, and they were bashing animals to death. And I independently investigated it and brought that footage out. The RSPCA assured that farm one month after we left. So there's clearly an issue with the vets, and, it, and it's not just me saying this. Dr. Alice Bruff, who's in our documentary, Pignorant, so there's an incredible conflict of interest with the vets too because they're being paid by the meat industry. Now, that, that, that's not to say the RSPCA don't do good work for animals. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that they're also endorsing horrific cruelty, horrific suffering. Like that, you can't say, oh, well, well, this charity has done good things, but they also endorse torture chambers all over the UK with their logo and mislead the public. Well, you're sort of arguing, you're arguing that the RSPCA should remove these logos um, and that they are sort of complicit in the torture of pigs via these sort of gas chambers. Um, and you would call on them to be, uh, to basically remove themselves or to be completely independent of the meat industry. Yeah, so they can police them without um, conflicts of interest, obviously. How are you supposed to have genuine investigations and change when everyone's being paid by the meat industry, including RSPCA assured. This is not, it's just, it's insane to me. Um, look, I've got to ask this question. Do, do you think, I mean, I, I mean, just sort of playing devil's advocate, yeah. is it not slightly inflammatory to say, to use the terms sort of gas chambers to describe how these pigs are being killed? Not at all. No, they're, 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 they're chambers, essentially a contained space called a chamber, and uh, they're filled with CO2 gas. I mean, it's what's slightly inflammatory is the fact that RSPCA endorse it and the pigs are being tortured. You know, and the industry like to call it humane, and that's, that's way more inflammatory than accurately describing what it is. I mean, they like to call it controlled atmosphere stunning because they don't want to associate it with any other gas chambers, but these are sentient beings being essentially tortured and then, you know, slaughtered en masse in chambers filled with gas. The industry haven't um, actually denied the use of gas chambers. <laughs> they don't say, oh, that's offensive. <laughs> They're like, well, yeah, like, uh, yeah, we do it. There's no alternative and uh, it has welfare benefits over electrical stunning and stabbing. I mean, I would see that as just a semantics thing and, and, and really uh, kind of a red herring to the actual issue. Well, look, look, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to speak with me, Joey, and yeah, it'd be good to keep in touch for any sort of further um, activities. Yeah, honestly, thank you for uh, to, for running this story. I think it's an important issue, and I, I honestly think it's in the public interest, and people would be interesting to know, interested to know about this, um, because it's not just a vegan or animal rights issue. It's actually something that the general public should know about, and they have the right to know about. And um, I appreciate you taking the, the you know taking interest in this story.